One of the great joys of EASD is the people that you meet. And I want to introduce you to someone who's been coming to EASD congresses since 1970. So he reckons it's 48 years worth of EASDs, though he confesses he did miss one in Lisbon for a while. Uh, so let me introduce you to Sir George Alberti. Uh, Sir George, it's in a, a privilege to see you here. Thank you. I know that you still do a bit of research, even at 81, and that's uh, good news for all of us that you're still doing research at 81. But what have you found interesting at this year's EASD? Um, I, th I think there are one or two specific things, uh, like the uh, session that Diabetologia had today on uh, diabetes and the microbiome, which for me is a very new area, one I've wondered about, and there were two superb talks. Um, the other is uh, going to some of the posters and other sessions and just hearing enthusiastic young people presenting their work, all very nervous, all very happy when it's over. Um, and uh, that has been good. I'm looking forward to the um, a lecture we're having this evening, the Minkowski Award. Um, and I also enjoyed Tuomaleto's presentation about, um, I suppose, worldwide epidemiology, prevention of diabetes, because he, together with um, Paul Zimmer from Melbourne and myself, have worked together in Mauritius, uh, watching the rise and rise of type 2 diabetes over the last 30 years. Now, if you could have your research career again, what area of diabetes assuming that you want to still remain in diabetes, what area of diabetes would you like to get involved in? I suppose I would focus now much more on prevention and uh, early intervention because unless we prevent type 2, and it goes for type 1, which is increasing too, uh, then we will have an unimaginable financial and human burden and I would, I would do that. And looking very hard at the, uh, not so much the genetics, which may help you pick out high-risk people, but, but some of the metabolic aspects of early diabetes or pre-diabetes and get that sorted out. Now, take yourself back to the 1970s. We've seen enormous advances in many areas of uh, diabetes. But what's been the greatest surprise? You know, what's come along that back in the 1970s you would have thought was completely counterintuitive or which has completely changed dogma of the 1970s? I suppose the main thing has been diabetes education, actually. And I, I appointed my first diabetes educator in Newcastle um, in about 1981 and she revolutionized the care of our patients and people uh, involving people in their own care. When I was a houseman in the uh, 60s, uh, woe betide any patient who changed their treatment themselves. I mean, they came in, showed you their urine tests, uh, and you adjusted their insulin up or down or their other agents and sent them away, and it was hopeless. And, I and there was no uh, argument with the doctor? Absolutely none. And uh, you saw 30 patients in the three hours of the afternoon, uh, and that was it. And, and that has changed dramatically. And I think um, more recently the realisation that uh, behavioural therapy uh, is part of the game, that uh, you are dealing with people with a lifelong condition and they've got to be um, helped or cajoled uh, into behavioural change which many don't want and I think helping that uh, is a major change. Um, and then, I mean, one of the other things uh, was going to some of the technology 
um, I had a very large artificial pancreas in my unit in Southampton uh, in the um, oh, 76, 77. Um, and this weighed about 80 kilograms and was on a trolley. And the thought that what we've got now, and we're very close to having real, portable, workable artificial pancreases, um, I, don't, I didn't think that would ever come about. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that with us. And I, I know there are many sessions that you're going to go to now, but if you want to see any of the sessions that Sir George has mentioned, you can see them on EASD.org. And I join with him in urging you to have a look at some of the microbiome work. It's absolutely fascinating.